One of the components about designing a responsive website is deciding on the best implementation for your navigation. Navigation can be challenging because there's many different solutions and different techniques for handling how navigation will function within a responsive design. We're going to look at a variety of ways of handling navigation for small screens and then we'll implement some of those options into our project. Whenever you're designing navigation for a mobile view, you always need to strike a balance between quick access to a site's information and unobtrusiveness, as well as being conscientious of screen real estate. One great thing about designing navigation for small screens is it really forces you to analyze what you're including in the navigation and make choices as to which items are really important. Remember that navigation is for your end users. Design the navigation around how the users will be able to successfully navigate through the site. There's quite a few different approaches that we can think about. More than we'll actually cover within this section of the site, but I'm just going to give you some ideas so that you'll start to think about different ways that you could handle navigation and think about the best way to choose a method that's right for your particular project. One of the easiest to implement solutions for navigation is to simply keep it at the top. Because this is really easy to implement and it's found on many response sites right now, it's something that users are used to seeing. If we look at this site right here, sleepstreet.com, when I view it in a responsive manner, you can see that the navigation changes size and it will change its stacking. And there's when I get really narrow, which you probably wouldn't see a device like this, you can see that there's a little bit of an issue with the language choice right here. But even on small screens, you can see that the navigation simply changes from being horizontally stacked to becoming a little bit smaller and then at some point it starts to go to more of a vertical layout. So these are definitely options that you can think about when you're building out a website. The pros for designing in this way is this is really easy to implement. It's essentially just your large screen layout. You might just have to reduce the size of the font a little bit. It has no dependencies on JavaScript there's n not any really tricky CSS that you need to implement and there's no real considerations that you need to shift through as far as your source order. This just flows in a natural way. The cons are what we're seeing right here, the height. And you can see at a certain point, especially because they have the language choice right here, my navigation begins in some situations to interfere with some of the layouts. Now this particular size probably isn't a huge issue for them because it's not a standard size that we would be viewing on a mobile design, but there are some issues even as we get up into some of these like mid-size screen. It's also not particularly scalable because if more navigational elements are added then what's going to happen here? It could throw the whole layoff off even more than what's happening. So you lose a little bit of control when you're designing this way. In addition to that, sometimes it would be hard for someone on a mobile to be able to click the buttons because the links might be too tight together and you might have an unwanted proximity click. You could also have some issues with this design, sometimes with cross-device issues. So make sure that you really check if you're going to take this route in designing your website. The next example that we're going to look at is the footer anchor approach. This solution keeps the nav in the footer of the site. The header is very simple and you can even see at the full size screen of Gray Goose right here that my navigation is anchored at the bottom of the page. So that makes it easy for me to get to no matter where I am. Now when we look at the site on a smaller device, you can see that the navigation on the bottom disappears altogether and it's replaced by this little menu link right here. If I click the menu link, it actually takes me to a very easy to use navigational list. What it's actually doing is it's 
anchoring down lower on the page. So you can see this is the top of my page. If I scroll down, I would actually reach these menu items, but because people wouldn't know that, they have a quick way that they can jump to these links by just clicking that little menu item. This is simply an anchor link at the top and it's using a traditional nav list on the bottom. So that's pretty easy to implement. Again, it's not using any sort of JavaScript. There's very little CSS that you need to incorporate. And you can handle this in a variety of ways by incorporating CSS positioning. And it's a very simple solution. Once you do this, there's just one quick link up at the top. So it gives you a lot of space for the core content of the website. So this definitely could make this a very desirable approach because it's not very intrusive onto the content. Cons of using this method are that sometimes the anchor jump can be a little bit awkward since you are jumping down to the footer of the site and it might not be quite as elegant as some of the other solutions that use more JavaScript and things to have the user experience the transition in a more fluid way. Needless to say though, it's an easy and successful method. The next method that I want to share with you is just a select menu. So one way of incorporating your navigation is to simply change it to a standard form select menu. So when I go to the smaller screen you can see that the navigation changes to just a pull down select menu and then I could choose the appropriate location and go from there. So you can see that on this particular site Retreats for Geeks the navigation is handled in a different way when it's full screen as opposed to when it's a smaller screen where it reverts to this select menu. And this select menu works well because it does save a lot of real estate. It doesn't take up too much space. So just like the footer link that we were looking at in the last example, there's plenty of space for the rest of the content to appear on the page. It keeps all of the interactions up top in the header section instead of dropping you down to the footer. It's something that people would easily recognize, a select menu especially if it says something like navigation. Some of the downfalls of this method, however, are lack of styling control. So these are very challenging to style and each browser usually handles select menus in their own way. So as far as finding a solution that's going to look the same across the board, that's probably not going to be something that you're going to be able to achieve very easily. It also could potentially be a little bit confusing because users are used to seeing select menus when they're filling out a form, so they might not immediately understand that this is navigation. If you have to deal with secondary navigation, it can look kind of ugly and weird. You would have to implement them with perhaps dashes or something like that to let them know that they were nested within a specific section. And in some cases, you might need to use a little bit of JavaScript, not in every situation, but you might need to use a little bit of JavaScript to do this. The next solution that I want to share with you is a, a toggle solution. This is, the toggle is very similar to the footer anchor approach that we looked at on the Grey Goose website, but instead of jumping down to an anchor at the bottom, the menu is going to slide open right in the header. So let's see how this works. This is Starbucks site, and if I revert to a mobile view, you can see how the navigation changes to these three little lines right here. That is also sometimes referred to as the hamburger link and if I click that you can see that the navigation just slides open and as I resize the page I would have more and fewer choices based on the message that is put across. You can see that that little link to the menu has toggled to an X and if I click the X it just rolls right up. So this is nice because it keeps the user in one place. There's no jumping around. The toggle menu appears in the same place. It doesn't disorient the user at all. It is certainly an elegant type of solution. It's a classy approach. It's very smooth to get to the menu. And it's easy to scale up. If you're going to add more menu items, you could easily scale this up and down. Some of the disadvantages is that 
the animation performance. If you do incorporate any sort of CSS animations, which you can see this is sliding up and down, so it's using some CSS animations, some of the mobile devices, in particular Android devices, they tend to not deal well with CSS animations, so things might not flow quite as smoothly as you may want them to do, so you would definitely want to test this solution on a variety of devices and in a lot of situations this does require that you use some JavaScript but the JavaScript is fairly minimal and in some cases you can get away with it with just straight CSS3 transitions so this might be a good option as well. The next option that we're going to look at is the left nav flyout. On this website right here you can see that the navigation is located on the left hand panel. If we switch to a mobile view you can see that I get the familiar hamburger lines right here and if I click on those it's going to slide the site over to the right and then display the menu options over on the left. So this is just acts like a toggle where it's almost like a drawer and it kind of opens and closes and reveals the navigation. This is a great solution because it doesn't take up a lot of space. It does provide quite a bit of real estate though for expansion so that can definitely be helpful if your site is going to be expanding or growing. It's very sophisticated looking and visually appealing, so it certainly does have a wow type of factor. And people are probably going to be somewhat used to it because companies like Facebook tend to use this sort of option. Disadvantages are this is a little bit more advanced than some of the other options that we were looking at. If you choose this approach, there's definitely going to be more coding involved. Because of the code, you might even need to implement different, depending on how complex your navigation is, different navigational elements for mobile and for a desktop type view. So that could be a disadvantage as well. There are lots of other approaches that you could implement into your projects. We're going to look at some of these. The first thing that you want to think about though, whenever you're considering what sort of navigation solution that you want to implement into your responsive website is how are the users going to be able to navigate from one place to the other. On a responsive site, the branding and the navigation, so this might include the logo and the navigational elements, you want to make sure that they take best advantage of available space but are very easy to see and are well placed within the site. Make sure that the navigation is designed well so that users can successfully and easily navigate through the site. That is the goal. Make sure to design the navigation to be flexible because navigational elements could change. New ones might be added, some might be taken away at some later point good navigation is going to focus on the path that the users are going to take through the site to get to the content that they need rather than just providing a hierarchical sort of list of the website's content. So think about the navigation layout for small screens first, streamline it, and include the items that are actually needed. From there you can make your navigation a little bit more robust for those large screen options. Also make sure that you implement metaphors that people are already familiar with, like that little three-line hamburger icon that we're seeing in this particular example, or maybe it would just say menu or explore. And then make sure that to keep the navigation consistent across screen widths so that you don't confuse cross-platform users. As I mentioned, we'll look at some of these solutions in our own projects, so that'll be coming up next.